Yeah. Welcome fellow forensic caters to the Forensic Tools YouTube channel. I'm Peter Fryer. Please remember to subscribe and like. I have with me today Peter Rotu from Leica Geosystems, part of Hexagon. We're going to talk to you today about the Leica range of technologies currently used by first responders and crime scene personnel to accurately map in 3D and in high definition accident scenes, crime scenes, incidents that need mapping as well as locations including but not limited to shopping centers and other noteworthy landmarks. Good afternoon Peter. Good afternoon Peter. But Peter, as a proud partner of Leica, we at Forensic Tools recognize the need for 3D capturing, uh, more specifically 3D capturing of evidence on the crime scene. Can you give us a brief overview of some of the technology that Leica has in this space? No problem, Peter. So Leica Geosystem, I've been working on technology for public safety sector. And at the moment, this, what we are looking at is our scanners. So we've got three scanners to play in this market which is your RTC 360, your BLK um, 360, and then obviously your P50. So you have to look at the, the need and what you need to capture to choose one of these scanners. Can, can you give me an example of a typical application of where the various technologies we, uh, will be used? We have the BLK 360, which is the smallest of the, of the three devices and obviously easy and quick to set up. We do have some partners in the presidential protection units that are using it at the moment where they go out and scan embassies, the inside of embassies, obviously it's small, so it's not really detect detectable that quickly. Also, we have the RTC 360, which is a bit bigger and can scan a bit more and a bit further than, than the BLK 360. And at the moment, these are typically used by your police force for crime scenes, especially traffic accidents, because they can clear your traffic accident within an hour if it's a, if it's a big pile up because it's a quick and easy scan. Then with the P50, where we mainly use that is for counter sniping. So there is a couple of presidents out there that are using these, uh, these P50s where if they need to go speak in public areas, they can go and scan the area and we can point out public posi uh, possible positions for, for um, snipers. Now, uh, Peter, you know, having been exposed to the technology over a period of time and myself having been present where this technology has been used, um, you know, the scanner forms only one part of this life cycle. Um, you know, I know recently we performed a scan of a very well-known landmark and, you know, during that scan, you capture not only the 360 degree image, but you also build a 3D model um, of that location that was scanned. Can you, can you give us an idea of how that could benefit public safety officials, emergency responders, firefighters, law enforcement in having access to this 3D model um, in real time. Okay, so Leica Geosystems actually comes from a surveying background. We, our core business in the past was, was surveying equipment. So we have a point cloud. How you can imagine that is if you have a point cloud, it's like literally going on a wall and measuring or making marks on this wall every 10 centimeters out of out of each other and taking a photograph of that and then afterwards your measurements obviously is within that accuracy so if you like the landmark that uh, that we've um, recently scanned if there's an evacuation you can very accurately and quickly get the quickest and the fastest route and obviously with the amount of people there you can calculate which exit is the biggest exit for you to exit and not funnel them into a small exit so and obviously with the photographs the photo photo imagery that it takes you can also obviously always see and have the, the background for that to see exactly where you're going or where you're measuring because the, the scanners does take a 360 panoramic view photos of what you scan as well and those two are meshed on each other. I think an interesting case worth mentioning is um, you know, the fire that was uh, uh, that broke out recently at the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris. Um, it's my understanding that the, the Leica technology was used prior to the, to the fire and that emergency responders had access to this 3D map of the Notre Dame Cathedral whilst the fire was raging which gave them an inside view um, of the cathedral which allowed them to you know, concentrate their efforts on certain parts of the cathedral. These 3D models were made available um, to academics and in fact game developers 
who used the exact same high definition, accurately measured 3D map, um, which were integrated into uh, some computer games that are now freely available. Uh, it's not just a specific market that uh, these stuff gets used in. It, it's actually a very wide variety of, of applications for the scanning. For, for the public, public safety side with the Notre Dame afterwards, they also went and scanned it afterwards to accurately evaluate the damage of the Notre Dame. And like the BLK360, it has a FLIR camera in as well. So that detects your hotspots and shows you the temperature that is there at the moment. So they can also calculate where the possible fire started. And obviously having access to the thermal imaging, um, you can use this for other applications uh, to detect leaks in heating systems, um, you're also perhaps uh, detecting gas, uh, gas leaks where you have the scanner in use currently? Yes, of course you can, yeah. Now, um, again, you know, having been exposed to the technology for quite some time and uh, being exposed to some of the uh, models that have been created, um, an interesting use case for me is also where the physical locations have been scanned and the 3D model has been built, it allows first responders to create simulations. An example of that that I saw uh, recently was where a special forces team that were planning uh, a hostage rescue exercise utilized scans of a facility that had been performed using the Leica technology to on a remote location to create a measurementally accurate uh, model of the location that they were due to uh, attack and rescue the hostages from. So with the, with the technology, obviously you can use that for training purposes because if you build, you can actually build, like you said, a model of where you need to go. So you can prep yourself before you go there. And obviously, I mean, having this technology with you, when the guys go out, you have the people at the control center that can also navigate them through, through the situation and not maybe navigate them into a dead end. So the, the technology can, there's so much use for this technology in your public sa safety sector where they can use it for training, they can use it for evacuation, they can measure their crime scenes. So it's a pretty, pretty interesting and nice technology that's out there. I think if we can pause for a minute on, on the crime scenes, you know, at Forensic Tools, we're all about forensics. And you know, perhaps if we can talk about once the scan has been completed and the 3D mapping has been undertaken, you know, let's talk about the software because you know, it's my understanding that you know, using the software that's available, and I'm talking specifically about Cyclone and IMS Map360, um, there are certain features in that software that will allow you to calculate the velocity of a vehicle involved in a motor vehicle accident. Um, you can use it for, for blood spatter and blood pattern analysis, as well as there's a ballistics calculator. Can, can you maybe expand a bit more on how that technology is used in labs around the world? Yes, so like you said, the scanners is the, is the hardware and the technology, but the intelligence and the power of these scanners does lie in the software. So with our, crime, or our IMS Map 360, once you have built this crime scene, you can, you can calculate the blood splatter, you can calculate where the person was standing when he struck the guy with the knife, or when he shot the guy, you can calculate the trajectory of the bullet. So you can obviously calculate the height of the person, or if it was a sniper case, you can calculate it where the, the sniper was sitting at when he takes the shot. With the vehicle collision, with that software, you can actually calculate speed of impact. If, if there was a, a accident and you want to calculate this, because obviously the guy will say, I only traveled at 80 kilometers an hour, you can actually then calculate, if the scan was done correctly, you can calculate the speed of impact of this vehicle and also then see the, the distance the, the person rolled if the, if the speed was accurate. And the, the benefit obviously is once the scan's been completed, you can retrospectively perform accurate measurements inside of the 3D models. And the benefit for law enforcement and more importantly, the prosecution, is that you have the ability to accurately reconstruct the crime scene in 3D and give the court the ability to be immersed inside of that crime scene months or even in some cases years after the crime was committed. That's fantastic. Now, you know, let's come back to the edge again and talk about the technology. We've mentioned the RTC, we've spoken about the P50, you know, we've spoken about the BLK360 also some, uh, a few times. I mean, typically, on, on average, how long would a high definition, 360 degree panoramic image, including a 3D map, take to scan on the crime scene? Well, that's easy, that's about four minutes. So four, you, four you're, you're saying that within four minutes, you're able to capture a high definition 
the 3D map of the crime scene. Yes. You know, it's ph phenomenal. That's per scan. So obviously if you have three, four more scans, it's four minutes times four. Yeah. So, I mean, the, the place that we scanned, which is pretty big, that the total scanning took us about an hour. And uh, I, I know that uh, you're probably 12 or 15 scans were undertaken um, during that period. Yes, it was about 12 setups. So Peter, we've covered the hardware side of it. We've spoken about the software. Um, you know, I'd like to also understand, can you integrate other data sources? I know that during our last scan, uh, we made use of a drone. What else could you possibly use as a data input into the software? Well, yes, the, the software, as I mentioned, that's the powerful side of it. So with our software, you can bring in drone footages that you can either use to create uh, mesh or scan data from, uh, from the drone images. You can uh, bring in outsource mapping, background images, aerial photograph, satellite imagery. So there's, uh, the resources is, is sort of endless at the, on the software of what you can bring in and what you can use. Obviously there is limitations, but I mean, there's a lot of stuff from the outside that you can bring in your drone images, which is always a good one if you want to fly over a place quickly and get the images that imagery can be then used to, to calculate stuff as well. And if we're talking about users of the technology, I know that the South African police currently use um, you know, some of this technology in their crime scene space. You know, can you mention any names of other, other agencies that are currently using this technology? Well, yes, I can. Um, the FBI is using it. Um, the CIA is using it at the moment as well. We've got some police departments in America and Canada that's using it. We've got the India, India police force that's also using it. And as far as I'm sure, there's, there is some anti-terrorism groups that um, is also using the software. Obviously, can't mention names there. Peter, thank you very much for the most informative information regarding the uh, Leica uh, range of technologies. Thank you very much, uh, fellow forensicators. It is my pleasure today to host uh, Peter Otto from Leica Geosystems, which is part of Hexagon. Uh, join us soon and remember to please subscribe and like our page. There's more to come. Thank you.